Beloved in Christ, praise be to you, Almighty God, for our togetherness again on this healing stream program. The title for today's post is You Are the House of God. You are the house of God. In John chapter 2, verse 19, Jesus declared that, and answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I'll raise it again. Destroy this temple in three days. I raised the Jesus was referring to his body figuratively, reminding them that he would die and on the third day he would raise from the death again. Beloved, a temple is noted for a praise of prayer and a praise of sacrifices, a praise of adoration, a place of honor unto the Lord. So prayer is a must vocation for the believer. It's not written that my house shall be identified as a house of prayer. And you and I, you are the house of God. God lives in you. Now, spiritual identification of his church and his house is clear that prayer is what moves the church. Because by prayer, the kingdom moves. The kingdom moves on prayer because in prayer, God does marvelous and wonderful things. Beloved, your prayer is empty if it is not in the name of Jesus Christ. By so doing, blessings of God will lead you. Because the power of God invested in the name of Jesus. So that you see yourself as more than a conqueror. And also knowing that the spiritual forces that are invested in the name shall be invested in the spirit because of the fact that authority in the name triumph. This shows that the medicine is in the capsule. The authority in the name is a key component. This reminds me of Acts chapter 3. When Peter said to the cripple who lay at the door of the temple, we don't have money, but we have to display the name on the authority and the excellency that is invested in the name. And as a result, the man was raised to life. We are talking of prayer that the blessings and the power and excellencies of God is released through the power of the Holy Spirit so that performance is ensured. Beloved, pray that all the virtues, glory, anointing, power, spiritual dimensions, and the blessings of God be released into your spirit so that you be a carrier of God's anointing to defeat the forces of evil. Father, let the power of glory, excellencies, and forces in the name of Jesus Christ be released into the ministry of your children for excellency of, a, of your glory. Beloved, be reminded, be reminded that Jesus' word is a prevailing word. So much so that in Acts chapter 19, the word grew and prevailed. The Bible even tells that the blood of Jesus also subdues everything. 
Because the life of the blood in the flesh and the blood speaks. So there is a lordship dimension in the blood to overcome the enemy and declare the testimony of God's saints. Frank, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, as a result of the name of Jesus, evokes liberty because the Bible says, Where the Spirit rules, there will never be bandage or hold up in the place. But friends, because of your lordship in the name of Jesus Christ, you and I qualify to use this name in a dimension unknown never before. And so therefore, as you sit under the feet of God to continually receive, uh, receive the word of God, the Bible tells us that Together with prayer, God builds us up so that we'll be able to take up territory for Jesus. In Acts chapter 19, verse 10, the Bible says, continually they sat under the feet of God, receiving the word. And when they mix it with faith and together they prayed, the Bible says, God used it to build up his church. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1 to 3 tells us that you and I, after we've saved, we need to hold fast the word of God and then continually preach to others so that it will help us keep it in memory. What is the gospel that saved you? And what is the gospel that right now it has become part and parcel of you. Because First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 1 to 3 tells us that we are saved by three scriptures that Christ died for our sins, buried and rose according to scriptures. What a unique future. Therefore the question is which scriptures have we been saved according to the New Testament? This is not Old Testament scriptures. Though you could also be saved by the Old Testament scriptures. But 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4 tells us that because the gospel isn't hidden or veiled and that we didn't perish but we were saved, then there's something that God has ordained for us. Glory is that give us access to the light of the gospel. Even getting into our memory. And by so doing, there's no need for us to build the great wall of China around our memory of our salvation. Else your salvation will be on a dangerous premises. Instead, this God's power that have translated you from darkness into God's light. In a sense, you have the seed of God's word in you. That makes you God's child. Beloved in Christ. It is very, very important, therefore, for you and I to understand these dynamics so that we would max ourselves with the angel of the light syndrome because your healing, prosperity, peace, and all of your deliverance is rooted in the salvation of the gospel. Beloved, if you are not really sure, if you cannot really give any test to your salvation, then that is a very serious issue because you can be a carrier in the kingdom of darkness. Friends, if you are generally born again, then behold, good things that come to you is very powerful in itself. 
And even no pastor or no leader need to lay hands upon you. But rather, you will be the carrier of God's glory to bring liberty, justice, and peace to humanity. Maybe so for you this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.